Live from the internet, it's the Dr. Tom the Frog Show! Hi-ho, this is Dr. Tom the Frog, and you're watching the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, where we talk about RPGs! Now, I, I'm super excited to bring on uh, a, a guy. He's designed a game uh, about elements. Uh, his name is is Max Herview. How are you doing, Max? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks, Tom. Great. Thanks for great, having me great. on the show. Oh, I'm super excited to have you on. Now, I understand uh, you've got a game called uh, Legend of the Elements. Now, are you just using the ones found in nature, like hydrogen or helium? In, in other words, is this a pretty light game? Uh, no, no. Uh, instead of focusing on like the scientific elements, I'm looking at like the 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 classical, like the magic elements, the ones that you see in fantasy, like fire, water, air, and earth. Oh, so basically we can play Earth, Wind, and Fire because they're awesome. Yeah, you could probably you could probably pull it off. It'd nice. probably take some twisting of the rules, but yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I, you know, maybe I understand you've got a Kickstarter. That could, that could be a stretch goal. Just just a, a note, Max. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna write it down real quick. Yeah. All right. That's this. It's free tip. You don't have to do, do <laughs> anything. Uh, now, now. So, so walk me through, seriously now, uh, yeah. Earth, Wind, and Fire game. I, tell me about uh, uh, Legend of the Elements. What, what is this game about, really? Legend of the Elements is an RPG. It's uh, It uses the popular Powered by the Apocalypse framework, um, made famous by Vincent Baker's Apocalypse World. Although, you don't need to have any experience with that game in order to actually play this one. You don't need that book or anything. But uh, it's meant to evoke the genre of wuxia action. So type of supernatural, like elemental magic and kung fu martial arts going all the time. Um, it's heavily inspired by uh, the Nickelodeon cartoon Avatar The Last Airbender. Oh, what, what, how, how much inspiration did you take from the movie? Uh, none. What movie? Oh, ha, ha, ha. Good answer. So how do you do that? How do you make the crazy wuxia flying stuff with Powered by the Apocalypse? Because that's mostly just shooting people, right? Yeah, it kind of is. And it's it's based around this game idea called moves. Moves have moves are a mechanic that it has a it has a fictional trigger. So like whenever your character does something in the fiction, so most of the time the game is just like the players and the master ceremonies, which is a game master type role. They just it's just a conversation with the player saying what they do and the MC responding. Uh, however, sometimes what the players say will line up with one of these triggers for these moves. And uh, then you switch over and you do the rules on the move and make you, have, you roll the dice a bit and it gives you results that will feed back into the fiction. The way you... Uh, the, the actual selection of moves helps uh, to define the genre. For example, in this game... Uh, in Legend of the Elements, there's a move for, like, speaking honorably, and a move for, for like, uh, jumping around. It's called Move with Intention that lets you, uh, that lets you, like, position around fictionally and do all that stancing and stance forming and the posing stuff that's really iconic to martial arts stuff. Ah, okay, that sounds cool. Uh, uh, now, are you saying there are lots of stances, like, different types of martial arts emulated here? Uh... Not directly. Uh, the game actually lets you just describe it however you want. It's less about which kind of stance you're actually taking and more about just when you take a stance at all. So uh, whether you're taking like a Tai Chi stance or a Kung Fu stance, it doesn't matter the difference. That's just about the way you describe it. Uh, the game itself just cares that you're, that you're taking a stance and you'd roll that action. Oh, okay. Now another another part. Uh, my my production assistant, Rogers, uh, over there. He said, "You you have rules for animal companions. Is this true?" There are, in fact, rules for animal companions. And uh, and and how, what are the mega stats for frogs? Uh, meg well, let's see. You have uh, uh your animal stat, which controls all of your like moves when you're an animal. Yeah, I I think I'd give you like a plus three. Frogs would oh. take a plus three. Oh, that's on, a lot. on on all because that's pretty high in the Apocalypse World, right? It really is. Yeah, because because I played would Apocalypse be an ex Pond. I played Apocalypse Pond, and and plus three is kind of mega. So I, I like that. Good, good call. 
Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Could I play as a frog and have a human companion? Uh, you could now. Uh, one of the first stretch goals we broke released a new playbook to the game called The Creature. And The Creature lets you play as an anthropomorphic animal or just an actual, like, just an animal or, like, as a spirit. And uh, instead of playing as a human character. And so you you could just play a frog character and, yeah, you might have a human buddy who stays by you and they're your companion. Oh, man, I... You just blew my mind, Max. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm. I'm really excited to to really go into the details of writing the uh, writing the creature. It's still in the planning phases since it was a stretch goal, but I'm I'm really excited to actually get it out there. That's excellent. So that means you're funded, and and so what other stretch goals do you have left uh, before the campaign's done? Ooh, I got a whole bunch still. Uh, we are getting really, really close to $3,500. And at $3,500, uh, it unlocks two more sub-playbooks, which are kind of like extra archetypes that you can layer on top of your existing character. So if like, yeah, you're mostly a warrior, but if you're also like an artist and you want moves for your character that describe how you're an artist, uh, you can use the sub-playbooks to do that. And so I got a couple sub-playbooks that are going to be unlocking at $3,500. Uh, one of them, for example, is being written by uh, by Drew Henderson up in Seattle, and he's writing The Wielder, which that's a temporary name, but its big thing is it's going to be about a guy who, um, about a type of character who wields like a magical object of some kind some uh, that gives him power. Uh, it's heavily inspired by Samurai Jack and his uh, his ancestral sword, but it could also be used for other stuff like a piece of magical clothing or... Or a ring. Oh, man. I, I like that. You know, you made me think of another one. I'm just going to throw this out. It's another free one for you, Max. You could yeah. do the welder, and it could be a really attractive human woman who uh, sometimes welds and sometimes dances and pours water on herself. What do you think? Oh, yeah. That sounds that sounds good. All yeah, right. Well, yeah, I'll stick that up there in the stretch goals. Fantastic. All right. So that, if I, when you hit uh, 90,000... I will write the welder for you. Yeah. I'm going to hold you to that, Dr. Tom. Uh, mark it in ink, baby. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, enough talking about pixel art and Legend of the Elements. I've got a serious question for you, Max. Are you oh. ready for a serious question? Yes, I am. All right. All right. Here we go. Uh, the serious question is mullet or mohawk? Ooh. I'd have to say mohawk. All right, now discuss why Mohawk over mullet. I think that Mohawk is the most cyberpunk a hairstyle can go. So I think it just wins by default there. I I cannot argue with that logic. I think you have answered correctly, Max. <laughs> Max, yes, congrats. You, you get a no prize for your excellent hair uh, information. I know a lot about hair. All right. I know nothing because <laughs> amphibian. Exactly. Nice. Okay. Well, Max, I got to tell you, I wish you the best of luck. Now, now this uh, is going to be up. When when does the thing come down? I think uh, August 30th, end of, end of August, right, is when this uh, yep. Kickstarter ends? Yep. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much for coming on the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, Max. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a blast. You just watched the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, and we hope that you liked what you saw, yo. But if it was a big waste of your time, well, it's free, so that's not a crime. But if it was a waste of your time, yes, it's free, so that's not a crime.